welcome back, everybody, to the adventures of our boy, Jesus the Brilliant of Gogasos. Last episode, we actually finally reformed the religion, so I don't need to open another episode promising to do that, thank God. We have access to some new systems now, some new sacrificing, that type of thing. But, my goal right now, the goal for King Jesus the Brilliant, I don't think we'll get it done as his character, he is 62, kind of surprised he's lived as long as he has, to be honest with you. We are trying to join the Al Alchemist Guild, learn the secrets of Wildfire, and then with that, I think we're going to nuke all of the summer islands here and try and form an empire for uh, Jesus the Brilliant before we move on somewhere else. So this boy, I, d I don't particularly want to make the DuJour Kingdom of the Summer Sea either, the, the DuJour Empire of the Summer Sea, because it's kind of a little bit too pleasant, right? It's like a rainbow crown of feathers. I don't think it really suits what we've done here. Um, we have, bearing in mind, sacrificed a lot of people, killed a dragon, done a lot of slavery, really, and captured a lot of women. So I think... We need to make our own empire with our own fancy... Well, we'll try and keep the flag of Gogasos if possible when we make our titular empire. I think that'd be a lot more fun. But first things first, we have to go and see a nice man who can turn us into a mystic. And in turn, that'll let us join the... Uh, where is it? What do we want to join? We want to join the Alchemist Guild. Right. So I also tested out a couple of things between episodes as well. I tried to get the Bank Society working, but Flame Queen's changes a fair amount more than I thought it did. And the Bank System is a little more integral to the game than I thought it would be. So I'll try and get that done for next episode. I'll see if we can't establish a Bank of Gogasos before we see... Before we see the series out. The other thing I wanted to do was actually try and colonize Valeria because I know a lot of people have been asking for that one. Might be something we have to save for a future series because unfortunately of all the mods I've tried and all the little sort of fixes and changes I've tried to make to update it, it's going to be a much bigger challenge and a, and a much bigger mod than I initially thought it would be. So I'll also try and get that done but for a future series so it won't be something we're doing with Jesus. Plus it also doesn't really make a huge amount of sense that he would be interested in uh, in you know the old ruins of Valeria there. So we could do a playthrough in someone like Mantaris and, and try and reform Valeria or start as Illyria or Tolos or something Something like that in a future series and, and do the whole colonized Valyria thing. But for now, so we've got to take the rest of uh, Sothorios. So that means we're finally going to have to go to war with the Brindlemen here. We also have Wyvern Point to take. Um, oh, is that it? These don't count as part of Sothorios. I guess not. There's a Morak. So we can take these two. Then we'll have Sothorios. We already do have it, but we might as well get in as much as possible. Because to create a titular empire, what do we need? We need more holdings. Yeah, we need a round size of 180 or three kingdom level titles. So we could just conquer enough of the Summer Isles here to obviously make that kingdom level title. So that's something we could do as well. First things first, I will go and see him. I want to make the most wildfire the world has ever seen and burn everything. Because we're not really interested in that, right? I was going to make give all this to patrons and just have them fight in like a little Summer Islands Battle Royale. Which I think is fun. But first things first, to make it sort of even, we will torch everything to the ground with our wildfire. Hang on a minute. This is not... Wait, no, 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 this isn't. This isn't the scholarship event. I thought it was, but this is the Valyrian Steel event that we took absolutely ages ago. An old man with a map. He came to me today a bit annoyed and tired. Your Grace, there is an old man in the courtyard claiming he has to speak with you. He claims of something you pay a great sum of money for. The ma old man seems to be a lunatic, but he claims he had a map. An old map of Valyria, where great treasures are hidden. Holy shit. And that's me saying we're not going to the ruins of Valyria. Why the hell would this dude care? And I guess we're going there this episode. Let's hear what he has to say. Now... Oh god, okay, it actually is the event. We've had this one, I believe, in, in the first series we did, but this is really, really cool. Before you stands an old hagger man in his 50s, maybe 60s. He doesn't look Valyrian Sotherossi, nor does he look like a beggar. Intrigued, you ask him about the map. The old man gave the smile, gave a smile the poom... Sorry? Gave a smile the moon pale maiden would be afraid of. Oh, I guess that's our god, right? Okay, weird. Your grace, it has come to my attention that you're looking for a way to acquire Valyrian steel weapon. As it happens, I have a map in my possession that will help you with your ambition. But before we continue, may I ask for an alcoholic refreshment? Of course. Uh, you have my curiosity, but now you have my full attention. The old man tells you he's certain about the location of Valyrian steel. He points to it on the map and appears convinced. The journey there will be long, arduous, and very dangerous, but purchasing this map could follow with great yield. Absolutely, 100 gold. We're going to go on a massive journey over to Valyria to try and uncover this supposed artifact. Now, this can be, to my knowledge, a sword or armor. I've never had the armor personally, but we can get a Valyrian steel sword out of it, and you can also get some other cool things out of it as well, but I won't spoil too much. The Fellowship of House Toad. While preparing for the journey, your priest suggests that you should take someone with you on this journey. You're great, so I've assembled a group of people who are at the top of their respective fields. Be suitable to accompany you on your quest. The Great Warrior, a soldier named Fashbinder, a, sol a soldier and navigator, sorry, a sailor and navigator, AA soldier named Vanis, the comely healer, AA learned person named Hororia, or we can take the old man, Balesso. I think we should maybe take the old man with us. He doesn't strike me as just a random artifact dealer. I think this dude could be important, so the old man shall come with me. So what was his name? Balesso, there he is. A saucy Valyrian, so he is actually Valyrian there. Quick, patient, ruthless. Let's mark him a special interest. You better not be lying to me, Balasso. I hope the hell. I hope we don't just like get out there and immediately die. 
I should be required to travel across. Have my flagship Titan prepared and provisioned. The flagship Titan once again leading us over to Valyria. That's kind of a cool little feature they've added there. My upcoming quest may be a good opportunity to learn and advance my knowledge. Perhaps I should dedicate my time to a particular field of knowledge. I've never seen this before. I will learn foreign languages. We gain the trait Linguist, which gives us Diplomacy plus 2, Learning plus 1, same trait Opinion plus 10. Draw maps, Cartographer, Movement Speed, Diplomacy, Learning, Days of Supply plus 25. That's pretty impressive. And same trait Opinion plus 10. We can have Traveller, Learning plus 2, and Opinion penalty down by 25 and 25. If we were playing somewhere with a lot of varied cultures, so, so say for example Volantis or the Three Daughters there, I might be more tempted to take something like this, but I think I really like Cartographer, actually, for the 10% movement speed. Linguist for the Diplomacy and Prestige, though. I'm going to go with Cartographer. I will draw maps. I feel like that would be the most useful on an adventure into an unmapped territory as well. The ship, Titan, is fully docked and loaded, and the crew is ready to part on your quest. Balesso is alongside your bridge as you give the command to cast off. This is cool. I was kind of worried that I would just be winging it this episode and we'd have to like... Oh, there we go. There's an Necronomicon event. I was worried that it, we would just have nothing but war. But hey, a quest of Valyria is much, much cooler. The Necronomicon. You arrive at the abode... I guess we're stopping there on the way. You arrive at the abode of the strange old Maester Valen. After some persuasion, he invites you in. You speak at length. And he tells you of the Archmaester Tothma, who knew many things of strange theories beyond the world and talking beings that are not human. Hey, it sounds like Top Bog all over again. I must have it. Game the Necronomicon. Classic. Now, does this tell us about the old ones, I wonder? The ones that uh, Top Bog obviously released. Let's take a look here. Necronomicon. Strange fears beyond. Many strange and unholy truths are recorded on its pages. That's all it says. Kind of cool. Why have we got the boat called Merciless? Can we get rid of it? We can give it to someone, I guess. You know what? My son. Have the boat. Oh, shit. Wait, we have, like, two different boats? Okay, so that's Marsh plus one. Prestige 0 0.25. Oh, they're the same. We're going to give this dude the Merciless. Plus 25 opinion, plus it'll also give him some prestige and actually allow him to do something. We need to find your wife as soon as possible as well. I'd really love to see the final expansion for CK2, Notepad expansion, that literally just adds a notepad that you can open and close, like, with, say, with a button over here. That would be so useful, so we can actually keep track of certain things. Right, okay, so let's find your wife before I do absolutely anything else. Okay, so we can buy a favor from Ziri. She's apparently not related to any particular, um, any particular noble, so she should be able to be invited to court with a favor. There we go. All right, nice. Invite to court and push the favor through. Sweet. Okay, well, that was a lot easier than I thought. There were a couple of characters that we had the option to do that with. Um, now, to my knowledge... Hey, a castle completed in Gogasos. Hang on, have we just made that? Oh, there we go. There we go. Now I think we can I think we can say the series was a success when we've turned it into a, from a ruin into this with two characters. That's pretty great. To the magnificent King Jesus, thank you. After many weeks sailing the seas, you're growing bored. Perhaps something can be done with Balasso to pass the time. We can play Kavas, I think is how you pronounce that, which is basically like Game of Thrones chess, right? Let's marry you off to my son before we do absolutely anything else. Drown, here is your wife. Alright, hopefully that will keep the family alive a little bit. Now, we can't marry him off again. We have to... He actually has to take a concubine, which is a little bit unfortunate, but hey, that's fine. We should play Kavas. Absolutely. You and Balesso are playing Kavas on the board. He attacks with his swordsman. What works against swordsman? I'm going to guess archers? He attacks with his archer. Now we attack with rabble. He attacks with his swordsman. Archers? Uh, archers? Dragon. A foolish move. Your piece in position and you slay his king. Yes, I'm an expert. That's actually a picture of me there. I wonder how they got that. Your master in tactics of combat has secured you a victory on the Kavas table. I am victorious. Game on entry, game on learning. That's pretty cool. And, plus 10 opinion, happy with quest. So there is an outcome, depending on how much this dude likes you by the end of it. We'll also send him a gift. Um, I'll give him an honorary title. Oh, court jester? Yeah, maybe not. Um, but depending on the outcome of this quest, this dude can also... Uh, certain things can happen. Again, I won't spoil it too much. Your son, Drown, has come storming in. He's refusing to marry Ziri. He says that he's betrothed. Is not a sufficient rank. I can't make you marry. Um, he died. <laughs> well, okay. That might have just completely fucked everything up. Seriously? He just dies? I hope that's not going to ruin the quest. Otherwise, that would be a big fucking kick in the teeth. Can we Can we try and get you to marry her again, though? Um, where is she? She was the genius one, right? Yeah, try again. Take two. We'll just keep doing it until eventually... Fuck's sake. Yes, I can make you marry. I am going to do it. We're just going to keep doing it until he t says yes. Um... Where did she go now? Yeah, where did she go, though? God damn it. Okay, you know what? I actually might not be able to make him marry, uh, as the pop-up would suggest. I thought it was just, like, a little gameplay mechanic there. God damn it. Okay, fine. Let's try you, then. Um, are you married to... Are you related to a lord yet? Yeah, your father is a lord. Great. Um, she is already married. We should probably check married no in that case. The lookout atop the ship's mast has spotted another vessel on the horizon. As it comes closer, you realise it must be pirates. My god, not pirates, please. I've heard the rumours. You attempt to fight them using your large warship. Of course we will. Or we can board them and slay the crew. I want to board them, slay the crew, 
Fight the pirate captain personally. Lord Camoso circle each other. Tense and focused. You scan him for any signs of weakness. Uh, what's his personal comment here? Uh, 25. He's slow and craven. Excellent. The gods guide me. And it's over. Oh, shit. It's not over. He actually survived that with 25 personal combat. He's no match for my might. Strike and die. Victory is mine. The pirate threat has been dealt with. The defeat of their captain caused them to flee back to their ship and sail away. Now it's time to continue on our way. Shiver me timbers. Um, call for a physician at once as well. Right, okay. A storm of water. Storms are common this time of year, so it wasn't entirely unexpected to be caught amidst one. But this one was different. It arose suddenly and took your ship with a vengeance. The vessel groaned in protest as it was being violently rocked back and forth by waves. A loud crack rips through the wailing of the storm, and you look up to see the center mast toppling down on your head, knocking you out. You yell generic sailing instructions. Titan is destroyed and removed from King Jesus' treasury. We will rebuild you, Titan. Bigger and better. Oh, God. Well, that's one... <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Um Oh shit. Oh that's that's actually god awful. What the fuck do you mean he died of the red death? My son deserves to be honored with the funeral. Your son, Prince Drown Toad, has died. Holy shit. Uh invite all the lords and ladies of the realm. We have no more heirs. All of our children have died. Frothing at the mouth, screaming and bleeding, attending to chamber business, screaming and bleeding, dehydration. I didn't even know Nisea Toad died. Shit. Okay. Um, agnetic cognatic though. No regency. And we need to make all of the vassals like us. It's doable. Oh my god, we've got to survive this quest and flip it over to agnetic cognatic. Game. How could you do this to me? The invitations have been sent to the lords and ladies of the realm to come to the funeral. We're off in Valeria. Meanwhile, my son has died and they're holding a funeral for him. I'll spend lavishly on food. Not that we know anything about that. Apparently, we gained the fate. Wait, we gained the trait fat for spending lavishly on food. Oh, it crashed anyway. Brilliant. Everything's going well. And it was all a horrible dream, except my son is still going to die. The stopover. After many weeks of sailing, we have arrived at the crossing. We finally crossed the summer sea and arrived at the port in Volantis to take on supplies. This is when the men tell you you intend to sail into the smoking sea in search of old Valeria, as the old man's map instructs us to do. Many balk at this and desert, but others, including the trusty Bellaso, remain loyal. More worthy men willing to take the risk can be hired anyway. To pass the time, while the ship is resupplied, you and Valeso join a local tavern. The atmosphere is racuous and friendly, but a group of hardened looking sailors, clearly oblivious of your rank and status, take a disliking to Valeso. They're throwing insults at him and slighting his honour. They laugh now, but an accident will befall them. Um, or we can just try and fight them outside. I'm gonna just kill them all. At first, Balesso was angry that he did not defend his honour, but then when the sailors leave the tavern, you bid him to follow after them. From a distance, you both watch as hooded figures emerge from a dark alley and slit their throats. I hope this vengeance pleases you. I thought we were going to, like, poison them or, or knock them out or something. Not have them literally assassinated in the streets. Well, there we go. You're a bloodthirsty tyrant, Balesso. Well, he is ruthless, I suppose. The ship has set sail again, bound for the smoking sea. The sea was created from the shattered remains of Valeria after the doom and is now filled with volcanoes and smoking stacks of rock. The men are apprehensive. Some say it boils in places and is haunted by demons. These myths are no danger. Set course. Yeah, of course. We've never seen a demon before in this. It's not like we've ever released a whole bunch of demons from a big old labyrinth. After many days of sailing, a, vi a vicious storm takes hold of the ship. We're buffeted by high winds and rains of hot ash and water. The ship, now out of control, veers towards a massive whirlpool. Bring the ship around to save him. Oh my god, no. The risk is too great. It's 5% chance we both die. Save him. Oh, thank god. Sailing around the edge of the whirlpool, a member of the crew spots Balesso in the water. Ropes are hurled into sea and then you haul him back onto the ship. He is cold and wet and was seemingly on the verge of drowning, but is now safely aboard and grateful for the risk you took in saving him. No problem, my friend. A meeting of your council, G Gelata's position... Okay, yeah, though, that's where it's a reason to see issues, nothing to do with us. Most of the shattered island upon the ruins of the city of Valeria lies is accessible only by high sheer cliffs. Fortunately, you have managed to navigate one of the few shallow inlets left on the isle. Now it's time to trek against the old devastated mainland to old Valeria itself. That was fortuitous, wasn't it just? Holy shit. This is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be interesting. I've not done this actual, uh this one before. I normally get the storm event, but this is a different playthrough. It's like a different a different version of the mission. After many days of travelling on the Arrow Strait Valerian roads, we've finally arrived in Old Valeria. You walk on an old on in an awed silence as you survey the ruins of this long dead city of Wonderman. The fabled topless towers lay ruined and scorched, and only great rents can be seen in the earth. Rents that have been swallowed 
Majestic rents that are swallowed, majestic palaces and sprawling temples. Truly, this proud city must have been a sight to behold at its peak before the doom. To this day, no one knows what caused the doom. Most say that it was a natural cataclysm, a catastrophe explosion caused by the eruption of all 14 flames. So those were the 14 volcanoes, basically. A handful of old maesters hold that Valyria used spells to tame the 14 flames for thousands of years, that their hunger for slaves and wealth was too much to sustain these spells as to expand their power. The ruin of this great city is truly a tragedy. I really can't read today, eh? Working in your observatory, on the boat, I assume, you are often disturbed by strange noises, uncannily large insects carrying away smaller pieces of equipment and odd human-like figures. I must focus. So we are studying the Necronomicon on our way. Apparently we also raided Top Box Boff. Uh, did we fuck? Did we? Gogasossi army? Gogasossi army? What? We've got troops in Volantis and the Three Daughters? Uh, caught, uh, Bacello died a natural death. Guess Valeria was too much for him. After exploring the ruins of the city, we have located the palace marked on the old man's map. This palace was one of the grandest cities in the city. Cascading city, many cities into the air, and adorned with Valyrian sphinxes made of fused black stone. Remarkably, it seems mostly intact. You and Bacello enter the palace to seek out its treasure. Here, we shall find our prize. The map leads you into a chamber at the heart of the palace. A door of fused black sh stone swings shut and traps you in. Four arches stand before you, under which all of them is a flame of different colours. Clearly this is the start of some sort of labyrinth designed to keep out unwanted intruders. So this here is essentially um, a trial and error puzzle, and you've got to kind of hope you get a little bit lucky here and not die instantly. So, okay. Which do we want to take? Again, there's no indication to which is the right path. It's just trial and error. Occasionally you'll become wounded. Occasionally you'll become severely injured, maimed. Um, you've just got to hope that you get out of it before you die, essentially. Pass through the Arch of Red Fire. That seems to have been the right answer. Right, okay. Let me just make a note of that. Because if you fail, you will get sent back to the start and it's just a memory game. But I don't want to particularly have to remember all of these along top of keeping track of everything else we've got going on here. You enter what seems to be a crypt. In the middle of this circular room is a grand tomb adorned by the likeness of a long-dead Valyrian dragon lord, Surrounded by dragons of black stone. Arrayed around the central tomb are four other tombs with statues above them. Each with staircases leading beneath them. Do you want to go for beautiful woman, young warrior, little girl, or old man? I'm going to go for the staircase beneath the old man. After walking through the winding corridors, you enter a chamber lit by dim torch- Did we seriously get that one right again? I better just write this down. I feel like we've got that one right twice in a row, but I mean it's a quarter chance of succeeding, right? After walking through many of the winding corridors, you enter a chamber lit by dim torches. The ceiling is a large dome adorned with the map of the three cities at its highest. At its height, as in the city is. I thought they were talking about the room, but no, they're talking about the freehold. Next to the four marked colonies of Valyria on the map is a door of black Valyrian stone. Do we want to take Mantaris, Tyria, Volantis, or Dragonstone? Mantaris is, is by uh, Valyria. It's this province just here that we talked about earlier. Tyria is... I actually don't know. Oh, Tyria is actually part of Valyria. There's Volantis, which is this big sort of area here. And then Dragonstone is obviously the small island next to King's Landing. I'm going to go for Tyria, seeing as that is part of Valyria. Oh god, we failed. As you enter the next passage where a trapdoor opens up beneath you, you fall into a dark pit along you doing your best to avoid the barbs and spikes on the walls. Did we gain wounded? We, did, we got very lucky. We did avoid them. So it was red fire. Old man. Now we'll try Mantaris. And we failed again. Okay, I'm getting fairly unlucky here. Uh, we didn't get wounded though, so it's red fire. Old man. Uh, Volantis. Okay, so it's definitely Dragonstone. Someone's been fired from the council. Okay, whatever. So we go red fire. Old man. Ha also, my son's not dead. By the way, I'm trying to kill him off, honest. I've given him rabies, severely injured, and he's stressed, and he's still alive. Not sure how. Dragonstone. There we go. Right, let's let's write that one down, because he should have died. You know, it's, it's not really fair that the game should crash, and I should get my character back. I think we should live with the consequences. You you reach must what... Pff, let me try that one again. You reach must what be... Must what be an inner court... You reach must what be an inner courtyard. Okay. Of the palace. Here is where must have been a once beautiful garden, for there are charred remains of many trees. There are no obvious exits, although at each corner are dragon skulls. Each has a depiction of a uh, dragon above it, and each must be bigger than even Valyrian the Black Dread. All the skulls have their jaw open. Black dragon, golden dragon, red dragon, or silver dragon, obviously golden dragon. Oh god. Jets of red hot flame of clouds of ash attack you from all directions as you proceed into the next cavern. Shit. Okay, we haven't been wounded yet, though. Man, we've got really lucky with this. So, red fire, old man, dragon stone. Uh, so we tried red, oh no, we tried golden dragon, let's go black dragon, okay, it's definitely not black dragon, red fire, someone's been fired, my son, uh, old man, dragon stone, okay, red dragon, hey, there we go, so it's red dragon next, 
My god, we've got kind of lucky with this. After blindly groping through the darkness, we eventually reach what must be a throne room. The throne is charred and twisted metal. The drapes and windows long rotted and smashed. Behind the throne are four doors, of which are murals to the peoples defeated and enslaved by the freehold. So, and also Giskari, Briana, and the Sarnori. So the Giskari were the only ones, to my knowledge, that were actually in a constant conflict. Like, they're, they're, they're renowned as the biggest enemies of the Valyrian freehold. Sarnori were the people up here. In, uh, in Marsh that was sort of swallowed up by Valeria and by the Dothraki there. Uh, the Rhaenar are from this area, or the Rhoynar apparently it's pronounced. The Rhoynar were from this area who eventually fled to Dawn, and then the, the Andals were from uh, this area, which eventually also went to Westeros and set up the, the sort of set up the, the kingdoms uh, before the Valerians went there. So I'm going to go with the Giskari. Oh shit, he was right. Bang on. Okay, Giskari. Okay, here we go. Through more twisting passageways you go until you reach the last room. Here is one black stone wall which must be a large bottle of mysterious blue liquid. Clearly it must be drunk. You and Balasso drink and the wall vanishes of the four doors appear. You suffer terrible visions of dragons, wyverns and wolves attacking. However, desperate... Uh, however? And desperately flee to a door to escape the terror. Not incredibly well written, I will admit. Is it? This is 90% me fucking up the reading, but it's also kind of confusingly written. Do you want to go down the first door, the second door, the third door, or the fourth door? Again, we have absolutely no idea here. The fourth door. We failed. All right. I've been injured. Okay, that was our first major fuck-up. So, we get wounded, and then the next time that event fails, we will get, obviously, uh, maimed, then after that, or severely injured, maimed, and then just die. So, that's one of our four strikes gone here, but we have got very lucky so far, so I don't think we need to worry about it too much. Old Man, Dragonstone, Red Dragon, Giscar, uh, we tried the fourth door. Third door? Oh, we weren't maimed. Okay, thank God. Right. Red fire. Old man. Especially because we have to get home and have another son. Otherwise, it's game over anyway. This is the riskiest thing I think I've ever done. Right. Red dragon. Uh, then it was Giscar. Jesus told us that. Oh, there we go. He's dead. Right. Okay. That's fair enough. So, we're back to where we were before the game crashed. I think that's entirely fair. Second door. My son deserves to be honored with a funeral. I agree. All the lords and ladies are invited. Oh, God. It wasn't that one. 6% chance of dying. Oh, shit. It's worse than I thought. Have we been maimed? No, we're still wounded. Okay. Red fire. Old man. Uh, Dragonstone. And then it was Red Dragon. Then Giscar. First door. Hooray! The vault. You and Bacello, uh, the, the dead man, proceed into the vault. Moving inside a heavy door made of fused black stone. Inside, you see a wondrous sight. Vast piles of gold, silver, and other treasures lie before you. And mounted above all is a magnificent set of Valyrian steel armor. Look at that. Like I said, the one outcome I've never had, and we've actually done it. It is a scale armor made from smoky black steel, edged in red gold, and covered in Valyrian runes and glyphs. Such armor would be worth a kingdom's fortune. Now it's time to head home with this new toad heirloom. Adds Valyrian steel armor to the treasury of King Jesus the Brilliant. Gain 250 gold, and the quest ends. There we go. Obtain Valyrian steel. Man, and now we get to go home and find out that our son's been horribly murdered. Nice. That's 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 really cool. What a, what a nice outcome there. Valyrian steel armor. Look at that. Holy shit. What does it do for us? Personal combat skill plus 20. Vassal opinion plus 5. Monthly prestige 0 0.5. I feel like we need a name for the armor. If you guys have got a good suggestion for the armor, let me know in the comments. Um... Please don't let me name it like Chode or anything like that. Let's go with something, let's go with something half decent that fits the campaign. That's cool though. That was a really, really nice event. There, there are a lot of different outcomes from that. Like sometimes you get a dragon. Sometimes you get just a weapon. Um, Bacelario or whatever his name was, if he was alive, could have also betrayed us as well, which is kind of cool. The best part about preparing the feast is deciding what food stuff to serve. Um, yes, this is the best part of the feast. There you go. Um, we're getting the trait fat because I spent the most money on uh, stuff. You know what? I'll take that. Right. So we need to get married. Pretty instantly. Luckily... Oh, shit. And none of those women we tried to keep for our son still around. God damn it. Okay, let's find a new genius wife then. Just try and have a child as soon as possible. Like, this has got to happen now. Um, search all. Genius. Diplo range. Yes. Oh, I've probably got a filter set up, haven't I? Yeah, there we go. All right. Let's see what we're left with here. Um, we've got... Oh, she is in Gogas house. Why can't I marry you then? Range marriage. Her to... Oh, we can. Okay, fair enough. Problem solved. Nice. Okay, so we married Ziri, who actually kind of likes us a lot here. Can we give her, like, an honor tell or something? Uh, is, there, is there anything else I can do to improve her opinion? Give her a ship, because we've got so many ships kicking around at this stage. Yep, and tempt for the feast, and tempt for the feast. Right, please, for the love of God, I need a son. I know it's not much to ask. Competence to it gives her no fertility bonus. We need to change our focus to... Shit, if we move away before we've actually got the mystic trait, though. Man, that'd be a shame. Um, Have a son? 
Yes, have a sun. Okay, so we can pick that one, which I think gives... Doesn't even give us a fertility bonus. I think it gives an invisible 20%, but don't quote me on that one. Yes, you're welcome. Please have Babby as soon as possible. The feast be begins. Lord Raymick Smith presents a petition before the court. I forgot about the Smiths. He says that crime and banditry in Skull Island is an increasing threat. Really? Pirates uh, with crime and banditry. What a shocker. Sorry, Corsairs. We're not pirates. We're not that lowly. Um, I will send someone to deal with the problem. I will send someone else to deal with the problem. And there we go. You've committed much gold to this extravagant feast. In particular, the guests were impressed with a large centerpiece on the dye table. It represented a green lawn surrounded with large peacock's feathers and green branches, to which were tied violets and other sweet-smelling flowers. Excellent. The gilt banners of House Toad were placed. It was worth the coin. Zalador did something. That one failed, but, you know, that's something. The friends and family of the departed as well, the noble lords of the realm, arrive at the keep. The body of Drown, cleaned and prepared for viewing, dressed in the finest funeral garbs and accessories, sits in the casket, placed at the feet of the ruling seat. The gathered crowd, buzzes and hush whispers, cut the mournful cries of those closest to the dead. And so it is done. Drown Toad died frothing at the mouth. He was a man who was known for their amorous adventures despite his vows. He was a well-respected swordsman, being one of the most capable in history. Holding a funeral will be removed, gain 40 party and our guests leave. So that was the son that we sent off on that big worldly adventure, came back as a, a very, very powerful swordsman, brilliant commander. What a great guy. Real shame that we lost him there. Goodbye, my son. So now we're a little bit screwed, eh? Um, nowhere. Can't flip over to Agnetic Cognetic either, uh, because we're still apparently on a quest. I hope that's not bugged. There we go, we're home. I... I'm the greatest. Gain the trait. Uh, gain 250 prestige. The ridicule has ended. So, we can flip over to Agnatic Cognatic, which I'm absolutely going to do, just so we don't get a game over here. So, no vassals need to have a negative opinion of us, which is fairly easy to fix. Send this dude a gift. Oh, fuck off. Seriously. I don't think he counts, though, because he's just a baron. I think we can still do it with these boys. Uh, yeah, there we go. Agnatic Cognatic, just to ensure that we don't get completely wiped out. Wait, seniority? Some random woman is now my... Oh, come on, really? Um, we do need to change Primo in that case. Shit. Okay. I mean, we had to do that so that we didn't die. It's kind of a shame with seniority, though. Uh, we could just kill this woman off, or we just do what we were going to do anyway and try and have a son as soon as possible. Galaza Toad. Game the trait cartographer. Hey, that's cool. The journey through foreign lands was the most illuminating. You've been able to draw detailed maps of your routes and survey many lands, cities, and rivers. Nice. That's a, that's a nice little bonus there. So what we can do to try and increase the chance of having a child is actually host a wedding feast. I believe this gives a, a bonus to having an heir. So let's do that one. I've been given orders for a grand ceremony in the feast to be hosted in honor of King Jesus Toad and Queen Ziri's wedding. All right, all of my vassals will be there. Excellent. Why have we lost stewardship, though? Um, hmm. Why have we lost stewardship? We were able to hold all of these promises. Now we can't, and I'm not entirely sure why. Doesn't matter too much. Prosperity increases, so we could give away Narth, uh, seeing as we'll just reinherit it eventually anyway. Oh my god, I know what we can do. Hang on. Hello, would you like Narth? Grant line title, why? Must have a line title that she can hold. Oh, because she's a woman, she can't hold... She's got a temple. I'm not sure if that would kill her, though. Um, can we revoke this from you, and I can give it to my... Uh, I don't like it. I'm um, not a big fan of that. Yeah, I also don't think it affects her because she's Gogasasi. I don't think these people can be affected by the butterfly sickness. Man, that would have been so good, though, if we if we gave her Narth and killed her off. So, spend lavishly to, to show our house's power. 82 gold. Perfect for my feast. Obviously, we'll do the best one. The book you bought from the Strange Desert Scholar has been proven useful. Yes, we must delve deeper. Let's get this event done as soon as possible so we can move on to, like, family focus or seduction focus. Either works. I hereby invite you to... Oh... I'm unable to attend. Well, to be fair, she does like us. Oh, it's because she's she's actually pregnant herself. Okay, that's that's fair. Everyone else, though, is apparently willing to join. The wedding day is upon us. Soon I'll be wed to Queen Ziri. The guests have finally arrived, but our records don't show from where. She's pregnant. Oh, shit. We might have done it. Oh, we're strong genius, and she's genius, so we've got a good chance of hopefully a genius kid coming out here. Here I stand before the gods to take up a holy valid marriage with Ziri. The great lords and ladies of Gogasos look upon me as I drape my arms of house toad around my bride. To finally seal our marriage, and now for the feast. Please don't die. You need to stay alive for just like nine more months, my dude. Maybe, maybe even less than that. I need to keep this trade route running. I lose 200 gold to keep the trade route in Gogasos. What's it bringing in for us? Um, yeah, no, that's definitely worth it when we've got this many taxes coming in. 10.5? Yeah, okay. Keep the trade route running. The more Blackberry wine Lord Tybro drank, the more and more louder he talked and laughed to loud, loud snoring. That's disgusting. Typical Lord Tybro, eh? The, wet, the feast is winding down, and now the bedding remains. Jesus and Ziri are stripped of their garments by revelers who make a bawdy joke along the way. They then bundled into their bedchamber, where they're finally left alone. A fine tradition, and they shall be bedded. So that, I think, increases the chance of having a child, but it's kind of a bit late for that, eh? I had great fun, and so did everyone else. That worked out pretty well. All the vassals love him. 
He's got some great armor besides this dude, but that's kind of understandable, seeing the whole um, the whole displacement that's occurring. Still like to get the Empire level title as soon as possible, though. Uh, we need a court physician before I wrap things up, otherwise I'll forget and we'll die horribly. Uh, compose a book? Oh, because we're feudal now. Because we're now unified under the, the, the good boy religion. Absolutely. Uh, let's go with stewardship then to try and be able to hold as many lands as possible. Um, that's fine. Of course, if we can get how to build a well, that would be pretty great. Do you want to gain 5 tyranny and 5 beer for 40 gold? Absolutely not. Get the hell out of here with that. Lose a trait arbitrary. <gasps> now everybody loves Jesus. While scouring the markets in the Isle of Toads, your scouts came across a Yeetish traveller. A traveller named Nee claims to be a travelling surgeon poet. Oh, a classic surgeon poet. Yeah, I've, I've majored in medicine and, and my minor was in uh, English literature. Sure. Um, is he actually a good... Oh, man, he's... Oh, shit, he's a mystic, though. So, mystics can be very, very good or incredibly bad because they have access to a treatment called Mystically Altered, um, which has a chance of giving you incredible buffs, but also potentially killing you on the spot. So let's go for a... Let's try it. Let's roll the dice, eh? She needs to your faces around her. Anything to increase her own health is fine. We need this Babby. How is Babby formed? With lots of gold and apparently... Oh, Embargo Wars. No, that's not how Babby is formed. Don't lie to me. Colonize Velos. Where the hell is Velos? Um... Velos? I don't know where that is, so I'm going to say yes and see what the hell we just got. Wait, wait what? Velos, Yonkai, Isle of... Asasi Valerian, the Harpy. What? Oh, because I suppose we're... Wait, no, 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 no. We, we are two sea provinces away, though. Oh, no, I guess we're only one sea province. Well, no, 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 hang on. Those don't line up. We are two sea provinces. How the hell did we do that? Um... Yeah, no, I really don't want this. <laughs> I, I feel like we're going to make enemies with Yonkai very quickly. Colonizing the Isle of Velos there. Um, merchant ships, natives, and slaves. I didn't do any of those things, so I guess it's just what Yonkai has done. Um, not interested. I'm, I'm just going to give this to a vassal and, and hopefully it, it can it can disappear. 400 gold. That was not worth it, eh? Uh, should have probably just used the title finder instead and then said, Hey, no, this is a terrible idea. But there you go, my friend. Enjoy it. Impossible. Is he any good? He's terrible. But Cho Toad. The perfect son. Welcome. Uh, we are going to give you... We're going to give you Thrift, because you're god-awful and you need at least some chance of getting shrewd. Chode Toad. You are going to call... What was that dude called? Do we want an adventure with? Because I thought that would be quite a nice name to uh, to give him. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what he's called. I'm going to have to go watch it back now. You were called... Ba ba Balesso, with two S's, I think. Or it might have been two L's. It doesn't matter. Named in honor of my friend, who gave me some incredibly good armor. Welcome. Um, Grant Valyrian Sword. Close enough, I guess. Let's assign him a Guardian. Let's get this kid educated as soon as possible. We have ourselves an heir. Now, because we're Agnatic Seniority, I believe my son still takes... Oh, shit. Hang on. Is it equal? So it's just the oldest. I thought that men would still take priority over women, but no, it is It is just shit. Now we need to go back to Agnatic. God damn it. Um... I mean, hopefully it's understandable why I did it, but I'm also not a big fan of this. We're gonna have to kill a lot of people to pave the way for my son now. Thank you all for watching. We're going to leave this episode here for today because it's been going on for quite some time. This was a good adventure. This was very, very fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Give me some names for the armor uh, below and I will uh, pick my favorite or the one that's most upvoted. You know, I'll just go for the one that's most upvoted. So if you see the one you like, give it, a, give it a thumbs up. Draw some attention to that boy. And I'm going to leave a shout out to all of the insane top tier level patrons for making this series possible in the first place. Without these people, we would be doomed. We would have never found some fancy armor, including Baited Timmy, Tom Terrier 18, Zachary Harris, Harik, Lucas Holting, Sean Thornton, Laurus, Haydog, Sadini, Necrofellon, Asuna Kirito, Facundo Vasquez, I am the Lizard King, Josh Lindin, Tesla, Michael Mullen, Tyler Birch, Travis Presley, Logan Thorne, Conspired T, Orcs Wolf, Average Gamer 419, Escape, and. Jackson Whitman, thank you all for supporting over on Patreon. And as well, big thanks go to Nathaniel Lindbergh, Euphrates, Jimmy, Quasar Fox, Jack Allen, Gabriel Van Der's, Llewellyn Thomas, Nathan Flores, Yoran DeVries, Duncan 217, Seth McDougall, Joseph Beard, Jordan Campbell, Harry McGowan, Will Wade, Chris, Sir Thor the Swede, The Sage, Asaro, Nick, Fraser Brennan, Kevin Saunders, Betamus Max, The Insane Pickle, Adam Person, Igor Kozak, Hajj Dumar, Noah Gallimore, Panther Pearl, and Alpha Scuff. Thank you all for your support.